Hello, I'm standing here on Arthur's seat and behind me you can see Edinburgh Castle. For a very long time, basically the headquarters of the British Army in Scotland. And at no more important point than in the years immediately after Culloden. Because despite what has been told us by our historians, the period directly after Culloden was a very, very, very frenetic time in Scotland and the British army were extremely busy. Immediately after the battle, prisoners were murdered in cold blood and the army fanned out across the highlands and under the direct orders of Cumberland, the Duke of Cumberland, the King's son, known still to many Scots as Butcher Cumberland, the army spread out across the whole of the highlands, effectively indulging in what today we would call ethnic cleansing. This brutal period of our history has been long ignored, though there is a great deal of evidence. This evidence was created in the two decades following Culloden by Bishop Robert Forbes, and he collected a great deal of information about Bonnie Prince Charlie, but also about the activities of the British Army. But it tells you a great deal about Scottish history that none of his work was published until 1834 and the entire book wasn't published until very late in the 19th century because the realities of what was going on were not fit for human consumption as far as the establishment in this country were concerned. And Edinburgh Castle was, as I say, that was the headquarters of the British Army. But it also has another role to play in understanding that period. Because in the library in Edinburgh Castle, there is a document. And I came across this document almost 20 years ago. And it's called the Contonement Registers of the British Army, 1746 to 53. And in it, it delineates all the cantonments of the British Army in Scotland in that period. Now, a cantonment is a, basically a garrison. It can be as small as half a dozen men, right up to 300. And there were hundreds of these across Scotland. And what this document, which has until recently never been published, what this document clearly shows is that Scotland was under virtually blanket military occupation for much of the decade following Culloden. And there is a great deal of supplementary information which has been hiding away in books. We have things like what they call situation reports or sit reps from a great many uh, of these small cantonments, many of which contain language referring to the local people which can only be understood as racist. Now, when I discovered this document in the course of researching cattle raiding, believe it or not, in the period after Culloden, I went to every institution charged with dealing with Scottish history and asked for help to have it transcribed, because it's just a simple handwritten document. And one excuse or another came from them all, generally along the lines of, oh, we don't have a budget for that. And I was telling a bunch of students on a course in the old Yes Hub, a course on Radical Scotland, about this document and I brought the document in with me and I showed it to them, it's 300 pages long, and said I was having trouble transcribing it. So what did they do? They said, can we help? So what happened then was the Stennis Historical Society was formed and the pages of the register were handed out and people did a section each. And in a matter of a couple of months, we actually had a complete transcription of this document and we could have it on computer for the first time. However, the brave souls of the Stennis Historical Society did not stop there because several of them went out and found further information in museums uh, in places like uh, Lewis and in Inverness and further work was also done into the period in the National Library of Scotland here in Edinburgh and the end result of this was that we located over 600 of these different cantonments. And then something truly wonderful happened because one of the members of the Stennis Historical Society, Davy Kennedy, who I'm quite sure will not mind me mentioning him, uh, has a certain level of what you might call computer skills. 
and he developed an interactive map. And that interactive map is now available online at Stennis Historical Society. And on it you can see all of the different kinds of cantonment registers, the periods that they were used, and of course the extent of them all, all 600 of them. And it is a wonderful document and it is very illustrative of the biggest problem Scottish history has, which is that those charged with being in control of our history, the Scottish historians, have ignored this period. They've been happy to bow the knee to the British establishment and not talk about what actually happened in the 18th century. And it took a bunch of dedicated amateurs to actually bring this information out. And it's now available and the period is now undergoing a major renovation. But there was one other thing came out in the course of doing the research into the cantonment registers and the period that we now call the occupation. And that is we came across reference to the swords that were used by the Jacobite army in 1745-46. Many of them had been made in 1715. They had been manufactured somewhere in either Germany or in the Netherlands and they all had the same message on them and it's a message we would do very well to remember today because the message is simple. Prosperity to Schottland and no union because the reality is that the Jacobite cause in Scotland was much much more about Scotland and its freedom than it was about the Stuarts.